I'm gonna pass it over to Wanda. Take it away. Okay, I, oh, there we go. All right, so we have to start, when we talk about cybersecurity and cyber fraud, we can't do anything until we actually talk about what fraud is in the legal definition. So we have actually five elements to the legal definition of fraud, and we have to take all of those elements and bring them forward into the world today of cybersecurity. Um, Michelle, I see your cursor scrolling around, so maybe you can bring your cursor down to the bottom. So first we have fraud being a false statement of a material fact. Well, that's kind of evident. They're trying to fool you. They're lying to you knowledge on the part of the defendant that the statement is true. I'm lying to you and I know I'm lying to you. Intent on the part of the defendant to deceive the alleged victim. I'm lying to you, I know I'm lying to you, I intend to deceive you. Justifiable reliance by the victim on the statement. So now I've lied to Michelle, I intend to lie to Michelle, I know I'm lying to Michelle, and Michelle believes me, and she relies on what I've said to be the truth, resulting in, of course, injury to the, to the alleged victim because of my lying. Now, what has happened here, there we go. I was trying to say, I think I've lost the forward mo motion. So then we have to get from the legal definition of fraud to the legal definition of identity theft and identity fraud. The U.S. Department of Homeland Security has been very active and very helpful in providing us with useful tools when we look at things such as identity theft and identity fraud. And they define this identity theft and identity fraud as these are terms that the U.S. Department of Homeland Security uses to define all types of crime where someone wrongfully obtains and uses someone else's personal data in some way that involves fraud or deception, typically for economic gain. What we used to hear of years ago was that identity theft had to do mostly with credit, credit cards and someone stealing the credit card to be able to steal goods, money, ATM, etc. Well, we've gone way beyond credit card theft. And it, such that even in, look how long ago, 1998, there was a law passed, a federal law, Identity Theft and Assumption Deterrence Act. This was created to prohibit one from knowingly transferring or using, so the thief, the liar, without lawful authority, any means of identification of someone else with the whole purpose to aid or abet any unlawful activity that constitutes a violation of a federal law. And this offense in most instances gives a maximum penalty of 15 years plus a fine and perhaps criminal forfeiture of any personal property that was used in the offense. There are several other statutes governing fraud, and this is just a list for your future reference. Identification fraud, credit card, computer, mail, wire fraud, financial institution fraud. Mail fraud has become very popular. Mail fraud probably became very popular at the beginning of the, of the uh, 2000s. We, and we saw books being written about mail fraud. Wire fraud is more and more popular today and articles are constantly being written about how wire fraud happens and how we have to be constantly on the alert for somebody giving us falsified wire transfer instructions.